I've just finished reading Christina Croft's stunning Shattered Crowns trilogy. The trilogy digs for and unearths what was really behind World War I and presents answers not part of commonly held beliefs and standard propaganda passed down over decades. Her characters are alive on the pages and her readers come away with new understanding of all involved. I am delighted to have the opportunity to ask Christina several questions that I think will be of interest to her readers. This is quite an immense subject. What inspired you to write the trilogy? It is an immense subject and one which I found quite daunting when I began the trilogy. But I felt I had to write the book because many years ago my grandmother used to look after me when I was a small child and she spoke often of her brother who died during the First World War. He was killed in action. And as I grew older it always intrigued me as to know what this war was about and I learned in school all the usual well-known causes of the First World War, and yet they didn't really make sense to me. It seemed such a pointless war that achieved very little. So I began to look more deeply into it, and as I did so I found so many discrepancies in the usual account of the war that I, I simply had to put them down and express it in this trilogy. While researching it, were you surprised by anything you discovered? I would say shocked and appalled rather than surprised. Obviously I knew of the horrors of battles and so on, but I wasn't aware of so much going on behind the scenes. The number of opportunities, even during the July crisis just before the war broke out, uh, to prevent this from happening. Opportunities that were simply ignored. And again, throughout the war, the number of opportunities for peace, which again were ignored. It also shocked me uh, how many people gained from this war, people who made a fortune out of it, while ordinary soldiers from every nation involved were going off thinking they were fighting for a very good cause. I was equally shocked about the murder of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, because the more I looked into that, it seemed very clear that the usual account of what happened was not quite the whole truth after all. There is just so much more to it. I felt from the start that I was touching the top of a very, very murky iceberg, and this could go on indefinitely, the research into it. Were there any parts which were particularly difficult to write? I found the entire trilogy difficult to write because I was constantly aware that I was writing about real people, millions of real people whose lives were ruined by this dreadful war. And to pick out specific parts, I think the murder of the Romanovs obviously is such a horrific thing to write about. And I also found it quite difficult to write about the build-up to the war when all the time I was thinking oh, if only somebody had listened to this, if somebody had listened to that, all of this could have been avoided. Though, also, I think it was difficult to get inside the mind of Kaiser Wilhelm, because he is, was, an erratic man, but I think he has been greatly maligned and trying to really understand where he was coming from and portray that was quite difficult. The Kaiser usually has quite a hard time from historians, yet you seem to sympathize with him. Why is that? Propaganda posters created by Britain and her allies during the war must have been very effective, because even today people still believe them and have an image of this, of the Kaiser as a madman or a megalomaniac monster trying to gobble up the whole of Europe. In fact, that image is very far from the truth. The Kaiser was prone to making irrational statements and having strange outbursts which have been quoted to kind of prove that he was this kind of monster. But in fact, when you look beneath that, he often said things that he didn't really mean. His cousin, Princess Alice of Athlone, who knew him very well, spoke of how much he loved England. And it was obvious that he loved his English grandmother, and I believe his greatest desire was to create closer ties with England. 
At the same time, within his own country, he did an awful lot of good that's now forgotten. He was very keen to promote culture and the arts. He had, at the beginning of his reign, he had refused to turn against the workers of his own people. He's seen as sacking Bismarck because he wanted power for himself, but in fact, Bismarck was urging him to crush the workers, and he refused to do that. There were many, many good aspects to his character, and I think if he had been listened to, rather than marginalised and turned into some kind of caricature of himself, you know, he he would have come down very differently in history. Obviously, you were writing about real people, but was there one of them who stood out for you more than the other in creating this work? Well, all of the emperors and Queen Marie of Romania were doing their utmost for their people throughout the war. All of them were, and that's often overlooked. But perhaps standing out most for me is Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who had he been allowed to live to become emperor, would have completely transformed Austria-Hungary and consequently all the central powers, I believe. Uh, he was a very forward-thinking man who had, just a couple of weeks before his death, met with Kaiser Wilhelm with a view to creating closer ties with Russia and finding ways to maintain peace in Europe. That's very often omitted from the history books. Equally, um, Archduke, later Emperor Karl of Austria, uh, who inherited the war, basically. He was kept out of the way at the beginning of the war and went off to fight, so he had first-hand experience of the battles, and from the moment he became Emperor was doing everything possible to try and create peace, and yet all his efforts backfired on him, and he was eventually ousted by his people and viewed as a traitor by his allies, which I think is absolutely tragic. He was a man who just wanted to bring an end to all this unnecessary slaughter. A very good man. Without giving anything away, the trilogy ends on a rather sad note, doesn't it? Well, unfortunately, since it's not a story and it's true, I think it had to end on a sad note, because the war achieved exactly what it set out to achieve, and that was, in my opinion, the overthrow of the Russian German and Austro-Hungarian monarchies, so that uh, the resources of those countries could be taken over by international businessmen, and the banks could also be taken over by international bankers. I firmly believe that was the purpose of the war, and it was successful. The casualties, apart from the millions who died on the battlefields, were the emperors, who to this day have been blamed for a war that was not of their making. Is there anything that you hope your readers might learn from reading these books? I think it would be arrogant of any author to claim to be able to teach their readers anything. But like all books, I hope that my trilogy provokes thought and maybe makes people question not only um, the history that we've been taught, but also how things are today, because I believe the same things are still happening. People at that time were manipulated. They were manipul manipulated through fear, fear that they were about to be attacked by this terrible, terrible enemy from overseas, and also manipulated by being made to stand in horror at what was happening. Take the story, for example, of the supposed crucifixion of, I can't remember if it was a French or a British soldier, but this was widely told in Britain and pictures were shown to make people be very angry at the Germans and very willing to fight a war against these butchers. In fact, that incident never happened. In the same way, people were terrified. They were told that unless they joined this war, something awful was going to happen to them, that these, the Germans would move in and take over all of Europe. And that made people be quite willing to sacrifice their own freedom, to go along with the war and to support it. And surely these same methods are used today. People are still frightened into responding and being willing to lose their freedom, sacrifice it to governments, and people are equally willing to go and support a war overseas if we are told that something dreadful is happening. 
but we really need to look deeply to make sure that what we are being told is the truth, because history does repeat itself, and if we learn anything at all from it, it surely is that we don't make the same mistakes that we made in the past. You have since brought out two other books relating to the 19th, early 20th century royal families. Do you have plans for more books on any of these subjects? Yes, I brought out Queen Victoria's Granddaughters, 1860 to 1918, which covers the lives and interrelationships of all 22 of the granddaughters, and also Alice the Enigma, which is a biography of Queen Victoria's second daughter, Princess Alice. At the moment, I'm working on a, another book, a much more cheerful book, uh, about Queen Victoria and Prince Albert as parents, and I hope that should be out at least before the summer. So it's, uh, we'll see how that goes. Christina, thank you so much for your time and continued success with all you do. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.